Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to part two of the Jetpack Joyride tutorial series in Scratch. So far we have a player with a jetpack that we can control with the space key. We can hit the roof and we can also hit the ground and the physics is handled here. So in this episode, we're going to be working on the scrolling backdrop that you see in the actual game. So create a new sprite by painting it. Go to costumes, upload your costumes. All files are available in links put in the description, so just check it out there. And we are looking for backdrop entry and backdrop main. Once those are imported, we can delete the first costume, go into our code, and we're going to first create a variable to keep track of our scroll X, as we do in most scrolling games. So let's create a new variable called scroll X. And this scroll X is going to be constantly moving as the player runs across and it's going to be mo moving at a certain rate. So let's create a variable called player xv for player x velocity that sets the speed at which scroll x moves. So we're going to go into events. One flag is clicked. We can first set scroll x to zero and set player xv to say seven. Then go into control, drag in a forever and just one block change scroll x by player XV. So player XV is going to control how fast scroll X actually changes. Okay, the next thing we need to do is create clones of this sprite and switch them to the right costume and have them go in the right position and so on and so forth. So we're gonna do that right now. So go into events, drag in one flag is clicked and let's hide the spawner sprite. So go to looks, uh, drag in a hide and then we're gonna create some clones. So first, switch costume to our backdrop entry. And so in our costumes, this is gonna be the first scrolling background when the player first joins our game. And then it's going to switch to this one and just repeat this one. Uh, we're going to set a new variable. We're gonna make a variable called backdrop, or we'll call it clone X, and make it for this sprite only. And this is going to be the X position for the clones. So when we start, we want the clone X to be zero, and we're just going to create a clone of our sprite at this point. Then we're gonna to have to make some modifications to get to backdrop main and use this one instead. So the first one, as you may guess, is to use the switch costume to backdrop main, and then change clone X by 360 so that it follows the initial la uh, backdrop entry and then we're just going to continue to create clones so that it's an infinite scrolling game until the player dies. So the way we're going to do that is go into control, drag in a forever, and then um, drag in a create clone of myself, and then uh, change, so go to variables, change clone X by 255, and that's the width of um, the repeating backdrop, backdrop main. And then we want to go into control, drag in a wait until, go into operators, drag in a greater than, drag in a minus. And all we're gonna say is, or actually this should be plus, whoops. All we're gonna say is go into variables, drag in a clone X, add 500 to that. And then make sure this is greater than scroll X. So what this does is it only spawns the incoming backdrop when needed uh, once the other backdrop has passed through the left side of the screen. So if you don't understand, don't worry. You can just copy this and it should work fine. Um, and then now we need to add some code so that the clones actually go to the right location uh, because this is just for the spawner sprite. So go into uh, control, scroll down. When I start as clone, and first we want to just go to the back layer. Uh, so drag in a go to back layer because we want to be behind the players and everything. And then we want to show these clones and then just go to the right position. So we're going to go into control, drag in a forever and go to X and this should be clone X minus scroll X. That's how you do scrolling this little trick here. And then for the Y, we just want it to be zero. And let's see how that looks. So you can see the scrolling works. 
and they are aligned with each other, so that looks pretty good. However, as you may notice, this clone actually gets stuck on the border right here. So let's add a little trick here to get rid of that. So let's go into looks, drag in a set size to 400, and then after set size to 100. And now you can see it'll pass. So it doesn't get stuck there anymore. However, we still want to delete the clone once it passes, just so we don't slow down our game. So we're going to go into control, drag in a when I start as clone, go into control, drag in a forever and if, and then drag in a less than operator. And we're going to do something a little bit similar. So we're going to drag this here and we're going to need that scroll X. So if it's below scroll X, then we're going to delete this clone. All right, so now the clones will get deleted at the right time, and we have this backdrop working. However, we don't want to show the ground or the roof while it's scrolling, so let's go into those sprites, drag in a when flag is clicked, and let's just set the position right now, just in case we ever accidentally move it. And then all we need to do is go into looks, drag in a show, but then set ghost effect to 100. So this will just make it transparent. We can use the same one in our roof, except just change this to positive 160. So now we have a scrolling backdrop. So one thing you might notice is that in our sprite one, which we can rename to backdrop, our backdrop entry and our backdrop main are not aligned vertically. So what you might see is this little shift here and you can clearly see that it changes costumes. It doesn't look very smooth. So let's make some adjustments to our costumes to fix that. So all I did was adjust the costume's position vertically inside of the sprite. And now you can see we have a much smoother transition into our backdrop main clones. So I just realized that in our backdrop sprite, we did this wait until block wrong. So what you need to do is drag in scroll X before the greater than, go into operators, drag in a minus, and do clone X minus 500. So we can just get rid of this and that will fix uh, how many clones spawn in our game. So yeah, we have a scrolling background. We have our player that we can control with the space bar. We have physics, and that's where I'm going to leave off part two. I hope to see you guys in part three of building Jetpack Joyride in Scratch. Subscribe, like the video, turn on notifications, and I will see you then. Peace.